sniffles. So I'm gonna try and control it during the live stream, but I have a tissue ready. And uh, how did I get the sniffles? Uh, well, I have a real Christmas tree this year and I don't want it to die. So I'm trying to keep in my apartment uh, like a little cooler. And uh, I think I overdid it. Last night I was like, it's very cold in here. So uh, I'm trying to find a happy medium. Uh, but thank you everybody for joining me for today's live stream. Ah, oh, look at 80s model getting the gifting off to a good start. Let me do my gifting. It's the first stream of the week. So here we go. Five streams from me. It's coming. Membership gifting, five, here we go, baby. I do it every week. Huzzah, five memberships. YouTube decides who they go to, uh, to match everybody else's generosity. Like writer boy, you guys are so great. Yeah, I'm gonna spill some tea today. I could use some tea, cause I'm sick. Hey Danny, I had tea last night actually. I watched the holdovers. That's how I was able to do my vote. But I'm done watching awards movies. I mean, maybe I'll watch The Iron Claw in a few weeks. That's the only one I really have to go. But I'm like, it's too depressing. Hey, Popcorn Roulette. I'm like, The Holdovers was a good movie. Uh, it made my top 10 for the year, but I moved it, you know, it's pretty far down. Uh, it's just too depressing. <laughs> this is a very sad Christmas movie. Oh, uh, thank you, Justin. I mean, it's good. But it's sad. It's, a, it's like, you know, by the way, The Holdovers takes place between Christmas and New Year's. So you can watch it between Christmas and New Year's. I think that's probably the best place to, to put it. Uh, all right, so I got, some, I got some tea for you on how scoops work today. So I'm going to give you, take a little bit behind the scenes there. That's right, the Grand Theft Auto trailer did blow the internet away. I was very impressed with how well that trailer did. I thought it was funny that it leaked. And then they were like, please watch our version of it. That was adorable. And everybody did. So everybody was awesome. And uh, I think it's probably the biggest game trailer of all time. And I also, I saw uh, a Twitter account point out that all the little crazy stuff that was in the GTA 6 trailer, oh, thank you, Ethan, was, also, was like a real thing that was on social media happening in Florida. And I was like, Florida's nuts, man. Florida is nuts. But I love it there. I mean, that's the home of Disney World for now. Oh, it's getting bad down there. Uh, that's pr quite a fight. All right, so anyway, um, I also wanted to do a little bit of an announcement. I'm trying to restructure. Ah, uh, uh, thanks, Wildflower. Wildfire, that's such a nice thing to say. Uh, Ethan, did I thank you for gifting a membership? If not, thank you. Uh, so any, yeah, that's it. Josh is like GTA six, perfectly replicated Florida. It did. It's Florida and it, it was so beautiful too. And I like the music choices. It was very good. Hold on. Let me take a drink of water. All right. So BTC movie club. I feel like, uh, by the way, I want to thank everybody who is a member at that level. I really appreciate, I appreciate everyone's support, even if you're not a member at all. I appreciate you. But I want to make sure that people who are um, uh, a member at that level get, uh, get, that, get their bang for their buck. So the, the, member, the watch alongs are very hard to time for people to be able to join in. So what I'm thinking of doing is uh, maybe doing like changing it from BTT Movie Club to like BTT like exclusive Ask Me Anything. You know? My nose is about to get very pink because I'm gonna take the makeup off. All right, so anyway, um, we didn't do BTT Movie Club on Sunday. Ah, oh, Colton, thanks for upgrading. So would people like that? Would people be interested in making Movie Club like an exclusive like just for you like a private video ask me anything that's what i'm thinking of doing instead it'll be once a month that's i'm glad to see the enthusiasm for it i wanted to ask you guys what you thought about it i'll probably do it starting in january just because it's tough to do something like that during the holidays uh so I, I appreciate all of you wanting a poll we'll do polls don't worry we'll pull we'll pull it up Polly mcpolister but I don't want to make a poll about asking about membership levels. Oh, Josh says he would upgrade. Oh, now I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, Abdul says, did you see they added Hulu to Disney? Yes, I'm thinking of covering that tomorrow in tomorrow's stream. I was going to mention at the top of this stream, but I was like, Grace, 
you need stuff for tomorrow. What are you going to talk about in tomorrow's stream? So tomorrow might be a streaming deals thing. Uh, the Fonz, oh, I love the Fonz, says, so no watch-alongs? I don't, watch-alongs, I got to tell you, don't really work. It's too hard, unless it's a show that's dropping, for people to be available. We had a good time. Oh, I'm glad to hear. Thank you so much, everybody, for the feedback. Thanks, Flashy G. I like you popping your collar there. And Carla, thank you for joining at that level. So, yeah, I think we'll start that in January. Uh, yeah, Stephen, maybe we'll still do a watch along every once in a while, but it would be for everyone. And I think that would be helpful, too. Because, you know, like, the, the people who can join in for BTT Movie Club watch-alongs, it's so hard, and it's a smaller group that, you know, it's really like 10 people sometimes. And so I was like, I think there's a better way. So that's what I'm thinking of doing. So watch-alongs would be for everybody, and then the higher level of membership would be a uh, exclusive Ask Me Anything once a month. And then we could become better pals. Okay. Hey, Katie lady. Uh, thanks for coming back. Uh, that's right, Ben. Don't talk about all of tomorrow's stories today. We'll talk about the Max A24 deal tomorrow, baby. Okay. All right. So let's get today, today's uh, three stories. All right. Hold on. Wait a minute. All right. Let me get ready my notes here. I don't know how I got so sniffly. Uh, it's gotten worse during the day. Sniffly, sniffly. I feel bad. It's hard for me to, to do a live stream. <laughs> I mean, I actually feel fine. I just have a, stuff, a stuffy nose. Tonight is reality television show heaven. It's Real Housewives and Amazing Race, and I'm very excited about it. Uh, all right, so anyway, we'll talk about that stuff for, like, tomorrow. Uh, is there, oh, Casey, there's a bug going around? Ah, baby, I got it! Hey, Dancing Dog 60. I got to get some Sudafed or something. Can't be going around sneezing on people I know. They won't, they'll be upset. So thank you, Dancing Dog 60, for gifting those memberships. Okay, let's get started with this live stream. Uh, now, the way it works uh, is that you keep your comments and questions to when I ask you for comments and questions at the end of each story. And then if you want to ask or say something that has nothing to do with the three stories of the day, you wait for the Q&A at the very end and then we have 10 minutes to talk about whatever you would like, okay? I'm also going to be putting out some videos tomorrow and on Friday. So there will be some, uh, like, regular videos too. Hey, Matt, it's super slow right now. Super slow. Uh, I was just talking to a friend of mine, a uh, friend slash source, and we were like, why is it so slow? Because I was like, where's the F forecasting? And we were like, our guess is maybe like Hollywood is shut down. Like some people thought that would happen with the strikes going for so long that Hollywood would just shut down until after New Year's. And I think that's kind of what you're maybe you're seeing. Like I thought I would think they would have released the F4 casting news. I'm waiting for them to announce it probably right when I'm eating my dinner. That's when they're going to do it. They'll be like, I think Grace might be eating her dinner right now and watching a Christmas movie. Release the casting. And I'll be like, ah, I hate you fighting my... So we'll see what happens. But I got to tell you, it's so slow right now. I don't care when he does it. I'm like, just release it. Just re release the Kraken, my friend. Okay. Uh, so here, I don't know if it's done. I only know about Vanessa Kirby. I haven't heard about anybody else. I, except like the Pedro Pascal thing, the offer was true. But I don't know if he, he, he accepted it. All right, let's boop it up. Booping it up. All right, hold on. Boop. Okay, this morning... Ryan Reynolds, here's the headline. Ryan Reynolds begged everybody, please stop spoiling the movie. All right, so here's his statement. Here it comes. Here he put this on his Insta. And he said, surprise is a part of the magic of the theatrical movies. It's important for us to shoot the new Deadpool film in real natural environments using practical effects as opposed to making the movie indoors and digitally, a.k.a. he doesn't want to shoot the whole thing on a green screen. Telephoto lenses continue to spoil surprises. So he's saying, we did create a perimeter, but these mofos just have amazing cameras. And by the way, I looked into how far a camera can see, and it's shocking how far telephoto lenses can go. Like, I don't think they could afford to cover it up. I mean, there just isn't that, I mean, like, it's just too hard. And it says, uh, and create a difficult situation for everyone. 
Here's hoping some of the websites and social channels hold back showing images before they're ready. The film is built for audience joy, and our highest hope is to preserve as much of that magic as possible for the finished film and the big screen. Part of the reason people post spoilers is because they're excited. I realize these aren't real-world issues, and it's firmly in the good problems bucket. I love making this movie. Aw, what a sweetheart. But I think he's right. I think, you know, he did the best that he could without trying to create a backlash. And, you know, of course, it's the Internet, so there was a little bit of a backlash. I don't think it's marketing, Mika. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. All right, but first I'm going to give you some background. Let me do a poll. I know you guys like the poll. Hold on. Here it comes. Start a poll. I did this one on Twitter, but I'll do it here too. How do you feel about the Deadpool 3 leaks? Uh, way too many. Just right. And then my favorite, what leaks? Because you're not online. <laughs> what leaks? Where? You leaked the whole movie? Where is it? That's my favorite reaction. Uh, so I will say that there is an insane level of leaks, right? Uh, some people are saying, uh, like, now, first off, as I've said before, my rule is that I'll share, like, kind of like a rumor or something that would be revealed in the trailer, but I feel like at a certain point, it's too many leaks. So I don't tell you anything that would be, anything that's meant to be a surprise in the movie, I don't want to share. And I've been really careful about that. And in fact, I've stopped looking into the leaks myself because No Way Home was a different experience for me because of all the leaks that I knew, even ones that I didn't share. And I was like, that's just like, like it, I was like, you know, I didn't have as good a time as I would have if I didn't know it. And I thought about my Endgame, Avengers Endgame experience, where I had no knowledge of pretty much anything that was going to happen. And I really thought that was a much superior experience. Uh, so, like, when I watched No Way Home, and I think this was for a lot of people, you watched it almost like it was a checklist. You're like, oh, yep, there's this thing that I heard about. There's the other thing I heard about. Oh, there it is. And then also you had two lists going in your head. You had confirmations of things you heard and then things they cut. You're like, oh, I didn't say it. I, I mean, I didn't see it. Danny argues that uh, it helps movies. I actually don't think, uh, well, rumors help. We'll talk about that. But first, let me, let me walk you through it, okay? So uh, I, believe, I agree that maybe they could find a way to stop set photos, right? The telephoto lenses. Maybe they could put up like tarps stuff like that. Maybe they could maybe find a better place to shoot. I mean, maybe it could be done. But they have a real problem in that there are a few scoopers. I don't want to point anybody out because I don't like when people talk about me. So I'll just say that there are some scoopers, uh, and one scooper in particular that I heard about that uh, works in the business and is getting this information directly. Now, the way most of us scoopers work is that we have relationships that we've built up with sources. And then also sometimes somebody will DM us. We'll be like, oh, awesome. Thanks for DMing me, you know? And uh, you get like a really cool surprise. Like, you know, someone says like, you know, it's a tip. You know, you see every news source says, hey, I open for tips. Uh, you know, do you have something you want to share? And so like, for instance, I got the Vanessa Kirby thing that way from somebody I'd never spoken to before. And I had to vet it, but that was a really cool thing. Um, and I appreciated that. However... This scooper has the inside access, I believe, themselves. Or, you know, and Hollywood's trying to find the scooper, but, you know, they just can't. They can't find it. Uh, however, you would see that this scooper is able to release things that uh, are from the script. Uh, you know, uh, and I, I think that's like, it's really rough. I feel like it really hurts the movie. Uh, now... It's you, Josh. That's hilarious. Josh is like, it's me. So I think that's really um, one of the problems that they have. Like someone is able to leak the things uh, with inside access to the actual script and the development meetings and stuff like that. So how could you stop that? Uh, so SMR Goose says, are there legal repercussions for this? You know, that's an interesting question because it's, an, it's basically news, right? And it's, it's just... Um, 
it's just like words. Like if you leaked an image, yes, that's the property of somebody else. Uh, if, or that's why they, you know, that's why they can do like a takedown. Uh, but just saying something, I don't believe there's any legal, someone would have to pass a law. But, you know, I think that creates a problem for journalism. You know, like it's a slippery slope then. Because like then what can you can say, um, well, Mika, the scooper, I don't know if they signed an NDA. The issue is that the scoopers are anonymous. That's the other thing. Scoopers are anonymous these days. You know, I'm not anonymous. If I say something, you know I said it, you know. <laughs> I have to stand by it. And that also, I think, creates some accountability. But there are a lot of scoopers, particularly on social media, uh, who, who, are, who are anonymous. So there's no repercussions for them. You know, they'd have to get their... Um, they have to get their IP address, and that's legally protected. And uh, Reddit ain't going to give it up, and Elon Musk ain't going to give it up. So that's the that's the issue. Now, if there were if you were not allowed to be anonymous on the internet, that would be a problem. Uh, I mean, that would solve the problem. But some of you pointed out that people, you know, that would create a whole other problem. That some people, because of where they live, or you know, for other reasons, you know, they worry about their security and they wouldn't be able to be online. So that's important. So that's, you know, it's 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 complex. So I think this idea of shaming the scooper is maybe an interesting way to go, and we'll see if it works. Uh, you know, like making people turn against it. But since everybody wants to see the world burn these days. I don't think that's going to happen. You know, I think I think it's a real problem. I think that they have to have maybe tighter security on sets and they have to share the information with less people. Uh, they could also set a trap for the scooper. You know, there's different things they could do. I mean, they watermark scripts. I mean, I've had scripts that I can't share because they're watermarked. Uh, and I'm like, what am I? I mean, I can't get this person in trouble. So I just have to sit on it, which has been frustrating in some cases because I have the proof. But it's watermarked. Now, scoopers, originally, scoops and spoilers would come on only on Reddit. And they weren't really in the mainstream. Uh, and, you know, for instance, some people had all the information on Endgame. But it wasn't in the general public knowledge at that point. Uh, however, I think with No Way Home, there was such intense interest in No Way Home that that's when it broke into uh, into the mainstream. Let me close the poll. Hold on. This very different results than on the Twitters. 53% say it's way too many. Uh, 36% of you, oh, that's interesting because you're not maybe on Twitter. Oh, that's really interesting. Uh, so much, many more of you here haven't heard about the leaks. And then 10% feel it's uh, just right. Oh, those of you want to see the world burn, you're like, bring it on. Uh, my pleasure, the ancient one. Uh, yeah, a lot of it's mostly on, on Twitter. Uh, so, I mean, you have to remember, you might be like, well, not that many people see stuff on Twitter. But, you know, actually not that many people go to see a movie in theaters. It's actually a pretty small number uh, when you think about the ticket price and everything like that. That's why a movie can so quickly blow up to a billion dollars because it, um, it, it, it gets more people to go. Like there, there's that much of a, a, a number of people who don't go to the movies, which has always fascinated me. Like I can't imagine not going. It's a little more imaginable these days after, uh, after the pandemic. Uh, but, you know, for most people, most people don't go to the movies and theaters, which is very, very interesting. So it's become uh, very mainstream. And, it, you know, with No Way Home, it was a huge revenue driver. It was a huge revenue driver. And then when Twitter started to be monetized, oh, that made it even worse. Uh, particularly, you know, by the way, you know, they had these big, I mean, uh, my tweets are monetized. But I have to tell you, they had these huge headlines of people getting these huge amounts of money when Twitter first started this program. But that is that has not, not only has that not been the case ever since, um, but... It only works if you interact with blue checks, primarily. Uh, there's very little value in uh, interacting and getting interaction from non-verified accounts, which I don't care about. That's fine, because Twitter's not my, um, you know, that's not, Twitter is something I do is like a, I almost view it as advertising. So I treat it very differently, but it's not my main hub of, of revenue. Uh, but for some people it is. So they are definitely putting out uh, tweets. By the way, I thought it was very interesting. Speaking of Grand Theft Auto, I saw somebody try to float a story that the female lead was going to be transgender, but they didn't have 
a, uh, and who cares? You know, I wouldn't care either way. Uh, but they didn't have a source for who they were saying that was from. They just said, oh, this is a rumor. And they had no inside knowledge. They were not an account that had, was somebody who developed, who delivered news. It was just a rando Twitter account saying this. And there was so much interaction with the tweet. And I was like, that person, I think, intentionally threw out clickbait because they don't care what your reaction is as long as you react. And that's the problem that monetizing Twitter has created. Because, you know, every, a lot of the resp responses were, that's not true, or what's your source, or, you know, where are you coming from on that? Uh, and the person just laughs all the way to the bank, and they have nothing to prove because they're anonymous. So there's nothing that can be done about it, but the, the thing is, is that that, that leak um, could stick to the game, uh, and, you know, it, it's just, it, it's very, it's just, it, it, it's a very difficult space right now. Uh, and that's kind of the problem that's been created. Uh, and also, I have to tell you, as I've told you before, everybody loves the mess, but nobody cares about the cleanup. So even if someone were to come eventually and retract a statement, hardly anyone sees that in comparison to who's, what the, that they saw the original. So that to me is fascinating. So uh, No Way Home, as I said, that, may, that mainstreamed leaks. And also, I feel it ruined my experience. Uh, that was the first one, but I think one of the reasons that it worked was that Sony, up until the movie was released, they refused to admit that Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield were in the movie. Andrew Garfield was flat out denying it, uh, and they wouldn't even put them on the poster, right? And even though every single scooper, and even one scooper, again, I don't like to name people, but you guys all know who this is, one scooper actually leaked the photo from the movie and stuck their name on it, that was incredible. Um, so like there was visual proof that they were all in the movie, but since Sony refused to confirm it, a lot of people felt maybe they weren't. That was incredible to me. That really worked out well for Sony and that, good for them for like uh, sticking to their sticking to their guns. You know, they were like, we're just not going to confirm it. They never put them in the trailer. It was nuts and it worked really, really well. Uh, but, you know, I think that just goes to show you that fans get really nervous about what they care about. It reminds me of another side situation. And that's it. I don't know if you've been following. I mentioned it the other day in my boys reaction that everybody's wondering if Anthony Starr is going to voice Homelander in the Mortal Kombat DLC. Uh, it's been a story going on. He's denied it several times on social media. And everybody's like, he's just trolling. Like even his latest interview, he's like, he said it on social media so far, but he was actually on camera saying he didn't directly answer it. He said he was open to it. And then he said, uh, go play Call of Duty instead. Now, some people are insisting, although maybe they're trying to get interaction on Twitter. They're like, he's trolling. He's trolling. He's trolling. He's trolling. And now to be fair, Mortal Kombat does have a history of trolling. So I guess it would work. But the fact that he told you to go play a different game, that's like next level trolling. Uh, there's a rumor, again, it's a rumor going around that it was a pay issue. Um, but I think maybe it's not too late. Maybe that's why nobody's like fully confirming it. Because, you know, Homelander, I believe, isn't coming out in the DLC. I think he's the last person in the DLC because they said he wasn't coming out until 2024. So... I wonder if maybe there's a chance. I mean, there's a lot of work that goes into providing the voice for a game because, you know, you have to do so much work for all the different, you know, iterations of what the person could say. So maybe there's a way to make it work. Maybe that's why nobody said anything. Maybe that's why, you know, Mortal Kombat hasn't spoken about it. Maybe that's why, you know, Anthony Starr, even though he's like kind of saying it, he's not, he's refusing to be like, like just flat out saying it. Because I don't, I mean, he, I mean, and then even then, I think a lot of people wouldn't believe him, uh, which I think is hilarious. They'd be like, oh, he's really troll. Because I guess Andrew Garfield set the stage for that. You know, Andrew Garfield, you know, flat out lied. But for, you know, I guess it was, it was good because people were surprised. But I don't see what the point would be of surprising people about whether or not he was voicing Homelander. Because uh, John Cena is voicing Peacemaker and he had a little, the CCXP, they showed a, a Mortal Kombat trailer. And he was at the end of the trailer, and it made a huge difference. He did a very good job. Mm. So, uh, so let's, I mean, I don't, I mean, can they not, you know? By the way, I picked this picture of uh, 
from them filming because it doesn't reveal anything you haven't seen already. And I think that Hugh Jackman looks so much like the comic book. I just can't believe it. It's so cool. He looks so much like the comic. I have the, the sniffles, Mr. Magic. Uh, also, that, er, that t- photo on top, that was officially released. And that also looks so much like the comic with Deadpool. You know, with Dogpool. Uh, but, you know, because, of course, he, he has cancer. And the character has cancer. And, he, and it's constantly eating away at his body, even with his uh, healing factor. And that's the best he's ever looked. I mean, he looks really good. I was very impressed. All right, does anybody have any questions or comments about this before we move to the next story? Please. Sniffly, sniffly. Ricardo says, why is Jennifer Garner not confirming she is in Deadpool 3 when it was already confirmed? Confirmed by who, Ricardo? I don't think so. I don't think it's been officially confirmed or else she would say it. 80s model says, I don't have Twitter, so I'm scoopless. That's crazy, 80s model. You know, I got to tell you, Twitter is a bit of a cesspool, but I like it because it's where the conversation is. I'm riding that thing like Dr. Strangelove all the way to the ground. I don't care. Danny says, will Deadpool 3 be rated R? They said it would. It better be. I think Logan was so well-received as an R-rated movie, and the Deadpool movies made close to a billion dollars already. I think they'll do it. Hani says, can they scout for photographers and stop them? Oh, Emilio, thank you for gifting five memberships. They can, but telephoto lenses, as Ryan Reynolds pointed out, are so strong that they can't find them. They're that far away. Kareem says, Grace, you reported on that bottom photo. What was your thinking about doing that? What is it? Was it news at that point? Well, Kareem, I've, I reported on the photo of both of them together, and that's because it was officially released by Ryan Reynolds. That's why I reported on it. Because Ryan Reynolds knew that the Wolverine suit would leak, so he, he, he actually shared it. Alex says, if too much stuff, le- stuff leaks, do you think it could affect the film's box office? Yeah, I do. And I also think part of the problem is that... Um, sorry. Sorry. Ah, sick brain. All right, I think part of the problem is that people are rooting against Disney these days and Marvel is an extension. So they'll be like, they're looking for any excuse not to go. So if they feel they saw everything, that'll affect it. Hold on, now I have too much light. Oh, Elijah, thanks for joining. Let's see if that looks better. Yes, it does. All right. Okay. David says, do you think the humor will have too much MCU silly comedy? No, I don't. I think Ryan Reynolds, he really knows his, he knows Deadpool and he knows how to be funny. So I'm not worried about it. Danny says, will Taylor ruin the movie? Uh, I mean, if she's in it, it'll be for a very short cameo. So she won't ruin it. And some people really love to, I mean, I like Taylor Swift. I'm getting a little Taylor Swifted out. Uh, But, you know, she's very, she's beloved. Fritz says, how big will Hugh Jackman's role be? Very, very big. And I told you he's going to continue on, at least for Secret Wars. Uh, Let's see here. Riley Steele says, any chance the studio would do reshoots to add in surprises? But that's the thing. Please keep in mind that it's not just... I'm not going to cover the leaks, Reese. That would defeat the whole conversation we just had. So, like, the thing is, is that, but I appreciate your enthusiasm, Reese. So, the thing is, is that the leaks are not only coming from set leaks. That's what he focused on, but they're coming from people, they're coming from inside the studio. So, there are people who work on it, or sometimes what will happen is that people who are extras or assistants or interns or PAs, production assistants, they are leaking. And so, that's where a lot of that stuff's also coming from. So uh, that's really crazy. I mean, Zack Snyder had to deal with the same thing on the Snyder Cut. So, all right, let's go to the next one because now you're just asking me to tell you spoilers for the movie. (laughs) No, I won't do it. I won't ruin the movie for you. 
Yeah, that's right, Riley. So even reshoots, the, there will be leaks. Because when they're doing reshoots, I hear about it. I hear about what they're reshooting, what they're adding. It, SMR Goose, it doesn't matter if there are no phones on set because the person sees it and they just go tell somebody. They tell me. Okay. Story number two. Hold on, here it comes. Let me clear my notes. Story number two. Boop! Ah, Maleficent 3! What? So Angelina Jolie said in an interview with the Wall Street Journal that they are developing Maleficent 3. Now, that's not... So this isn't confirmation from the studio. This is confirmation from Angelina Jolie that she is really aggressively pushing to make another Maleficent. But until the studio greenlights it, you know, you could be waiting for a little bit. So, uh, but I think the funniest thing is that Bob Iger, just like a week or so, week or so ago, said, we're not doing any more sequels unless the story demands to be told. And then he's like, Maleficent 3? And you're like, they didn't even demand the second one to be told. That's the second one underneath there. Oh, thanks, Celestine. I like that photo. So uh, the first one was the best, obviously, and I liked it a lot. Although it came out right around the time that Frozen did, and they both did the same re, re, um, like redefining true love, that it didn't have to be romantic love. And in fact, it was more often not romantic love because romantic love is so volatile. But the true love is most often between like sisters, like Anna and Elsa, or like a surrogate mother, like Maleficent and Aurora. And I think that was really nice. I think that was really nice. But so Frozen kind of overshadowed that development in Maleficent. And then in Maleficent 2, it was pretty. It was okay. I mean, I thought it was all right. Um, but I, I, was, I was a little surprised that it dipped so much in quality. Uh, but yeah, so they're good. So after I saw the second one, I'd be like, mm, I don't think we should make it. Oh yeah, okay, SMR Goose, let's do a poll. And the rumor is that Joan Collette Sarah, who directed Jungle Cruise, uh, would maybe direct this movie. Are you interested in Maleficent 3? Heck yeah. No way. And then I need to see a trailer okay I don't want to give you too many options because then it dilutes the response I guess I would be and I need to see a trailer uh I don't know I worry if Angelina Jolie is still as popular as she once was you know she decided to take on Brad Pitt and nobody knows what happened on that plane but we do know that Brad Pitt was cleared by the authorities I mean I think it was investigated by the FBI in fact and he was cleared so I really can't continue to be upset about it, right? Or, it's, I mean, like, if he was cleared, he was cleared. I mean, we have to have a, a legal system for a reason. Uh, now, of course, there'll be some people who might be like, oh, um, I don't believe it or I do believe it. But I think for the most part, if somebody's cleared, that person is cleared. And I think that Angelina Jolie's insistence uh, on it and also that it's such a, um, a really, uh, it's been a really bad divorce. So... You know, it's been so bad that it started playing out in the public eye, and I think that's always becomes problematic because then people pick sides instead of just keeping it private. So I'm not sure if Angelina Jolie is still as popular as she once was. I'm sure she certainly has some supporters, but I don't know if she has the supporters that she did at one point. Uh, she is making a, a movie with Halle Berry, remember, Maud versus Maud, which is basically spy versus spy, and it's a female version of the older actor Actioner. But Liam Neeson kicked off, and then Keanu Reeves does with John Wick, and Denzel Washington with The Equalizer. So I think having Halle Berry, who, by the way, was in one of the John Wick movies, uh, I think having both of them, uh, you know, in a movie together could do pretty well. But let's see. I mean, I think as for Maleficent 3, I think it's just more sequels from Disney, particularly after they just said they were going to cut back on that. And I really don't have confidence in Disney at the moment to have a really good solid script to green light. You know, like a lot of this stuff is very weak and they're like, they're more like green lighting the idea and being like, how can you, how can you not see Maleficent 3? And I think more and more the answer is, yeah, or I can wait till Disney Plus, uh, which is really, I think, uh, where they've run into trouble. Like, I think a lot of people who would watch it would watch it on Disney Plus. All right, I'm gonna end the poll. 
You know, Ricky Minaj, I like your name. She was good in Eternals. I would agree with that, even though her character was a little ridiculous. Uh, although it was such an obvious take on Wonder Woman, I found that sort of offensive. Uh, are you interested in Maleficent 3? 42% say, no way. 35% say, I need to see a trailer. But only 21%. Uh, are excited about it. Yeah, that sounds about right to me, actually. You know what that sounds like? It sounds like a Disney Plus movie to me. And I think Angelina Jolie should be careful what she wishes for, because Bob Iger might say, we are making Maleficent 3 for Disney Plus. And she'd be like, oh my God, what happened to me? And that would be embarrassing for Angelina, Angelina Jolie. Um... So let's see here. All right, does anybody have any questions or comments about this? Oh, there are two red boxes. No, thank you, Nicholas. Um, does anybody else have any comments or questions about this before we move to the next one? It is like Disenchanted Shahar. Danny says, Grace, is she upset she won't be Cleopatra because of Zendaya and Gal Gadot? I'd be shocked if they still make that Gal Gadot Cleopatra movie. I, I don't think... The studio should want to do it, and I don't think Gal Gadot should want to do it, to be honest with you. Uh, and I don't know if Zendaya is, she's a better fit with the material, but I don't know if she's the right fit either. She's an interesting choice, though. But, I mean, it's funny, because I heard that Gal Gadot was basically going after every Angelina Jolie type. She's trying to make herself the new Angelina Jolie. Joseph says, I don't have any confidence in Sean Bailey and don't understand why he's still running Disney Pictures. Well, I said, you know, I'm surprised that, you know, Bob Iger's not doing a little bit more change of who works there. Fritz Fromm says, if they don't get Elle Fanning to return, they can forget it immediately. I think she would return. I mean, what else is Elle Fanning doing? Nothing. I mean, uh, the great was just canceled. Jay Garcia says Maleficent should be evil, not just misunderstood. Well, Jay Garcia, I think that ship has sailed. She should be like mischievous, though, and I think that she was kind of very muted in the sequel. MM92 says Hi, Grace, with so much political turmoil. Uh, now, do you see any real pathway forward for Disney to reunite the mass audience? Yeah, for them to, you know, just make good quality content. I think it can still be done. Other studios are able to do it. Jacob says, I love Angelina, but I don't need another Maleficent. If I want to watch the character, I watch Sleeping Beauty for that. Sleeping Beauty is my favorite animated movie, as many of you know. Agreed. Ricardo, I kind of liked Michelle Pfeiffer in the last movie, and she was evil. Although I think at the end they kind of all got along, right? All right, let's go to the next story. Uh, that's right, John Teal. Uh, Angelina Jolie is obviously a better actress than Gal Gadot. I tried to defend Gal Gadot, but that last Wonder Woman movie made it very difficult. Okay, that's right. That's right, Danny. Let's go to the next one. Story number three. Boom, baby! Oh, this Ken movie, it's happening. It's not officially, officially confirmed, but here's why we're doing an update. So Greta Gerwig was doing an interview for 60 Minutes, and they asked her about the Ken movie. And instead of her saying no, like Margot Robbie said, we didn't build it for sequels and spinoffs. Uh, we just built it to stand on its own. And also, Greta, Greta Gerwig could have said, oh, gosh, I'm not even thinking about what we could do after Barbie, because right now I'm just focused on the awards campaign uh, and Narnia. But instead she said, I mean, I guess we'll see. And you're like, oh, she basically confirmed it. So that she must be so excited about it if she was willing to risk her Oscar chances. <laughs> She's like, I don't care. I'm making Ken. So I love that. But you know, Oscars. Okay. We will do a poll, Sebastian. Hold on. Are you into a Ken movie? Yes, I need it. And then, no, horrible idea. And then, I need to see the trailer. <laughs> uh, okay. Now, uh, obviously, 
uh, Barbie is trying to win some Oscars. Ryan Gosling is considered a front runner, as is the song I'm Just Ken. Uh, and now, now a lot of people felt, how could you make a sequel to Joker? And Joaquin Phoenix went on to win the Oscar for that movie. Uh, but, um, and, and, you know, it made a billion dollars. But they did make, they are making a sequel because when a movie makes a billion dollars, there's just no way you don't do a sequel. It's impossible. I would also argue that I bet you that some of you talking about the Knuff thing, I think like, um, although you are actually against the movie, it seems. Uh, you said, I feel like I Am Knuff has been had its moment. Well, I don't know necessarily. Um, here's what I'm thinking, all right? So, first of all, what did they sell the most merch of from the Barbie movie? It seemed like they sold a lot of Ken merch. I was seeing the Ken sweatshirt and hats and dolls sell out super fast. So I'm sure Mattel is like, man, we sell a lot of Barbie. What if we could sell some Ken stuff? What if Ken became his own toy line? I mean, that's very exciting. So right there, Mattel's probably like, oh, we really want to do this. And as some of you have speculated, Mattel might have pumped a lot of cash into the Barbie movie and the promotion. So they, I mean, Warner Brothers would love it because, you know, Mattel might, um, Mattel might, uh, you know, have some of the, burden some of the financial uh, elements of it. Tony Stank, thank you for uh, gifting a membership. Uh, Celine, I think it would kind of be a sequel. And here's where it gets very interesting to me. Uh, so first off, Greta Gerwig has been gone on the record saying they had a ton of ideas for Ken. And in fact, they had way too many ideas and many of them didn't make it into the movie. So you're like, oh, that's great. That means they have certainly have the material already for a Ken film. Now, Greta Gerwig is going on to do the Narnia movies, but maybe she could co-write it with Noah Baumbach, and then maybe Noah Baumbach could direct this time. You know, they're, of course, a couple. They have some children together. So, um, you know, they're, they're, you know they, have, they could do this together, and it would be Noah Baumbach's time to shine. I don't know if Noah Baumbach can direct a comedy, but maybe. I mean, he, by the way, he directed Marriage People with, of course, not only Scarlett Johansson, but Adam Driver, and I would love to see Adam Driver in a Ken movie. He doesn't even have to play a Ken. He could play like another, I've always said that it would be interesting if Ken met toys that were made for boys and what the interaction like that would be. You know, like what if he met some action figures or a G.I. Joe? And I think that, that stuff is very, very strong. And of course, Adam Driver is hilarious uh, as we've seen many, many times on SNL. In fact, he's hosting this weekend and I'm super excited about it. So I think the best way forward, uh, I think this is the best way forward for the franchise. Uh, Cause Ken, you know, Barbie told him he needed to find himself. Uh, that's right, Adam Driver is a GI Joe. That would be interesting because of course he did serve in the military. So uh, Ken needs to find himself. That he's no longer defined. That's right, oh, Colleen just pointed that out. Um, and then, you know, uh, he doesn't wanna be defined by Barbie anymore. So who is he? Uh, and Barbie, now some people might argue, well, hey, are you really going to do the Barbie spinoff, which was a movie about women and feminism, be about a guy? And you're like, but yeah, because the Barbie movie said everything that needed to be said about feminism, and it said it beautifully. So why not go and do the male equivalent of that? Now, on that note, I don't think it should just be Ryan Gosling's movie. I think it should be all the Kens, just like the Barbie movie with so many Barbies. Now, of course, Ryan Gosling would be the main Ken, but what about all those other friends who were Kens? I think they would be great to bring along. I'd love to see them come. And, you know, and some of you are talking about, you know, the LGBT element of Barbie. And I think they were definitely already hinting that in the movie. And, you know, like uh, Chris Evans' brother, Scott Evans, was fabulous. And, you know, so maybe, maybe some Kens, uh, you know, are, you know, maybe some Kens discover what they're, what's going on with them. So I think that would work. I just think it's a really good idea. I don't think Mark, uh, Alan, yeah, that's right, Ricardo, let's bring Alan along for the ride. I mean, who, I, why not? I just think it's a very, very strong idea. Uh, I don't think Margot Robbie, oh yeah, Chris Evans, you're right, Danny, let's get Chris Evans in here for a cameo. That would be so cool. Uh, I hope they can keep everything a secret because now everybody's super interested in the movie. Uh, but that would be hilarious. I would love for, and Chris Evans would totally do it. So, uh, uh, Ricky Minaj says that you don't think that Mattel would go down with the LGBT aspect, but I think they might because they have to understand what's driving the sales for the Ken merch and that it's a lot of adults who are buying it. And so I think that maybe they would be okay with that. Uh, and, I, you know, I don't think that Margot Robbie would be in the movie because she's gone off, you know, her Barbie left. 
Oh, Carla, Captain, uh, Chris Evans is a Captain America action figure. Carla, that's such a good idea. Oh, I love that. That would be hilarious. I mean, there, and there's your Warner Brothers uh, uh, Disney crossover. Uh, 41% of you are, would need to see a trailer. 29% think it's a horrible idea, but 29% are very excited about it. So as you can see, that's pretty good. I like that. I think that's excellent. Uh, Shahar, I don't know if Disney would allow the crossover, but I think in that context, they might. Uh, but anyway, uh, I think you could have other Barbies in the movie. And also maybe, maybe Ken meets a female action figure. Maybe that, you know, but I don't think he should define himself through another relationship. Uh, just like Barbie didn't. I think it should be about Ken finding Ken. And again, I want him to go interact with action figures and toys that are made for boys. I think that would be hilarious. Yeah, that's right, Ricardo. Like a He-Man action figure? Zac Efron already looks like He-Man. I think it's a great idea. Derek says, part of the fun of Barbie that was it wasn't a franchise movie. I know Warner Brothers will want to cash in, but I worry the audiences won't tune in nearly as much for a Ken spinoff. I'd rather a Ken miniseries on Max and then that it's a... That's an interesting idea, Derek. But when you make a billion dollars, it's just, it's inevitable. Uh, Irwin, that's right. We got to get Jonathan Groff in here. He, of course, was going to originally be Alan. Michael Sarah did an amazing job. But you know I love me some Jonathan Groff. That's right, the Fonz. They can talk about whose truck is bigger. They had so many double entendres in the Barbie movie for Ken. It was hilarious. I even was shocked at some of the jokes they made, like the beach off. I was like, whoa. I mean, they totally knew what they were doing. Uh, but I thought it worked. I mean, I thought it was really great. So I think it's a great idea. I think, and I think it would be a really big deal. And maybe this time more guys would be interested because it would be about Ken. Uh, I think it's a great idea. Like, come on, if Ryan Gosling and Adam Driver and Chris Evans and all these guys were in a movie and Simu Liu and Michael Sarah and Jonathan Groff, people would go. You know, and it had more musical numbers. I mean... That's right. Danny, let's get Henry, Cav but not Henry Cavill as a Ken. Henry Cavill needs to be like a Superman action figure, like a discarded Superman action figure. Oh, that would be so funny because he's been discontinued because there's no more. Uh, oh, that would be so funny. Henry Cavill would be great for this because he's very funny. Oh my gosh. I know that Warner Brothers doesn't like him very much, but I'd be like, suck it up. Get him in here. I just think it's hilarious. I just think that it writes itself. There's so much funny stuff to do here. Okay, let's do the Q. Uh, that's right, Gary Phillips. I agree with you. Ken discovering boys' action figures would just, I mean, imagine how Ken would react, especially considering how Ken's imagined war. And then they met action figures who do nothing but fight all day long. Uh, although my action figures fought and then had a dance. Because <laughs> I had male and female action figures. Oh, it's so funny. Uh, Deni Exion, it was the after battle dance. Uh, maybe that could be Ken's idea. Exion says, Denis Villeneuve is telling magazines now that Dune 2 is much more of an action movie. Uh, you're getting ahead of the Q&A there, I see. Um, I mean, let's see. Can Denis Villeneuve direct action? That, to me, is the bigger question. All right, let's do the Q&A. Hold on. All right, it's 4.53. We can talk until 5.03. Hey, Henry, welcome back. And then Welm says, I wrote two or three papers in college about Mattel. You know, that's interesting. You know, Crete's goal was to push Mattel IP into the Hollywood space to jumpstart sales. It worked. Toy stores were especially uh, pink after Barbie's success. That's a great thing to study, Welm. Hey, Henry, thanks for joining. Let's see here. Riley says maybe Ken can enlighten other male action figures from what he learned with Barbie. That's right. He really can spread the word. Ah, uh, Ricky Rick, Ricky, Ricky Richie. I remember Cindy in England. That's a, that was a great toy line. She had incredible furniture. That's right, I don't care, Bear. It becomes a live action toy story. That's hilarious. And there's nothing that Disney Pixar could do about it as long as they don't have a cowboy and a spaceman. Although it would be funny if Ken accidentally came across some knockoff versions of them. That would be a funny joke. Uh, Henry, thank you for gifting a membership. Natalie Sue says, Grace, what is your take on that recent interview that Chris Wallace did with Adam Driver? Is that the one where he called him ugly? I thought that was horrible. You know, first of all, you never know what 
I think there's, you know, I think Adam Driver is very attractive. Uh, and it's uh, not only because I think he's, I think he's traditionally attractive, but confidence and personality are a big part of what, you know, nothing is sexier than self-confidence, as I'm sure you might have heard people say. And so I thought it was a horror. I mean, I guess Chris Wallace did it for clicks and views, but it was a horrible thing to do to Adam Driver. I'm glad Adam Driver uh, just rolled with it. But, you know, it just goes to show you how tough it is to do interviews. Thank you for gifting some memberships, Not Modern Painter. Adam Byer says, I'm sorry you don't feel well. Avoid dairy products as they help, as they make you produce more mucus. Oh, I did not know that. Thank you. Although I overall try not to eat dairy and stuff like, anyway, because it's, it's, it does create inflammation. Frog Eater says, Disney can't fire Jennifer Lee when she's crucial to bringing back hand-drawn animation back at Disney on a bigger scale beyond Disney Plus's Tiana series. Also, once upon a time, a studio. Well, I didn't say they should ever fire her, but I don't think she should be the head of the studio. I'd be like, you know, Jennifer, don't you want to go and do other things? That's what I would say to her. Don't you want to focus on other things, Jennifer? You're not fired. You're stepping back to focus on what you love. Yeah, let's flush this out. Let's see here. Danny says, Grace, do you think most men are supporting Furiosa? I don't know. People didn't seem that interested in Furiosa. I was surprised. They, some of the people said they waited too long, and they might that might be true. Honey, I did see the actors on Actors with Margot Robbie and Killian Murphy. That was cute. Although I don't know why she, I think it was interesting she revealed that they asked her to move, that somebody on Oppenheimer asked her to move Barbie so they weren't opening opposite each other. But I was like, why do that to Cillian Murphy, Killian Murphy? What's he supposed to say to that? I just thought that was a weird place to do that reveal. And also, I don't think she ever should have revealed that call because it creates a situation where people feel they can't call you because, you know, you're like, oh, if I call up Margot Robbie, she might share this conversation with the general public, you know? And so I think that's something maybe she should have considered. Josh, I think that in fact, it's great that GTA 6 has a female lead. I thought the graphics on that were insane. I was so impressed. And she seems really cool. I liked the character design on her a lot. She's in jail. She's having a tough time. She's a Grand Theft Auto character through and through. And I think that's fantastic. Uh, Elijah Russell says, what's your opinion on the GTA 6 trailer passing Endgame's 24-view record? 24-hour, you mean? It may possibly be one of the biggest entertainment releases of all time. You know, I think it is. Maybe I'll review the cutscenes on that. Because it's, although, I mean, I don't know, right? I mean, either you like it or you don't. I don't really know if people, maybe, I'll think about it. I have a lot of time to think about it because it doesn't come out until 2025, which I think is hilarious. Kareem, Pixar could use Barbie and Ken because they made a deal with Mattel. Yeah, Danny, I didn't like Oppenheimer either, but, you know, I respect it. I respect its success and that a lot of people did like it. John Teal says, Ian Somerhandle for Va Vampire Diary. from Di Vi uh, Va No, John Teal, Ian Somerhalder is too TV. I would not put him in a movie. Thank you, Sm Smelly Moore. Mr. Poppy, you gifted a membership. So generous. Bespunge says, what are your thoughts on Luca, Soul, and Turning Red finally getting released to theaters? Well, if they weren't available on Disney+, Plus, I think that might be interesting. But why on earth did you pay to see it in a theater? Unless you have like an AMC A-list or something? Like, just watch it at home on your giant television. Devin Henderson says, any truth to the rumors that Anya Taylor-Joy would be a gender-bent silver surfer? I'm scared and the toxic Marvel space is making me not want to watch any of it. Uh, I think that that is like a genuine offer that went out. Again, not accepted yet that I know of. And as I said before, I think she'd be nuts to, to do that. Uh, because it's a waste of her talent. Jero Jareem says, do you think Hollywood will look at other toy IPs like Masters of the Universe, Voltron, or Thundercats to develop after the success of Barbie? I don't think any of those were ever the, the level of Barbie. I think that's the problem. Like, G.I. Joe was huge, and but that didn't really materialize the same way, right? I think it's really tricky. Randall says, hello, Grace. First time commenting. My question is, do you think the Wish movie will come out on Disney Plus for Christmas? That's a good question, Randall. I was wondering the same thing. I think they would have announced it by now if it was. Um, I think they're worried about her undercutting 
it's Oscar chances, but I don't think it's going to win Best Animated Feature anyway. So they can do whatever they want. I think I would think it would be great if it came out on Christmas Day, just like Encanto did. Okay, I'm caught up here on this stuff there. Jack252 says, who do you think will take over for Jennifer Lee when she steps aside? I don't know. I mean, it might be like a, um, uh, a, a Mark Burns says, who is Jennifer Lee? Jennifer Lee is the writer director of Frozen, Frozen 1 and 2, and now she's the head of Disney Animation. She also co-wrote Wish. Uh, and, and I also, I think, I believe she worked on Strange World. Her track record is not great. Um, uh, but I think I would like an actual executive to take over. I don't think creatives make good executives. Uh, hey, Mr. Uh, Mr. Poppy. Uh, let's see here. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Frosty Salt says, hear me out. Little Mermaid 2 directed by Gore Verbinski. He did amazing with the Pirates of the Caribbean trilogy. He did. And I thought the Little Mermaid, as I said, had a lot of similarities to the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. But I don't think Gore Verbinski would want to go back to Disney, although he's not working, so maybe he would. But I don't think they're going to make a Little Mermaid 2, which is too bad because I think they set up a great sequel. Maybe they should have just gone straight to the sequel idea. I can't react to GTA 6 because uh, I already watched it. But maybe if they do another trailer, I'll react to it. Uh, although I don't know what the rules are. I don't know if Rocksteady will allow reactions. Hold on. Let's see here. Al Watch says, what do you know about the Penguin Show? All I know about the Penguin Show is that I'm not allowed to discuss it in any capacity. So let me move forward. Dun, 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 dun. Elise says, what are you looking forward to seeing? Elise Liana Boyd. I'm looking forward to seeing Migration, and I am looking forward to seeing Aquaman, even though it seems like a total waste of time. I like the first movie, so here's hoping I, I like this one too. Uh, Fritz Fromm says, who will be the best actress frontrunners? I think it's Lily Gladstone, Margot Robbie, and Greta Lee probably. Jacob says, Grace, if you have time, I really recommend seeing Godzilla Minus One. I can't, Jacob. I don't have the time. I was going to go, but it's the holiday season. It's so ridiculous. Some, pe some people are like, it's a conspiracy. No, it's the holidays, and I didn't have time. It was, the, you know, I was going to go, but then it was the, my family was having a big party for the tree lighting ceremony at Rockefeller Center, and I chose my family. I'm sorry. Let's see here. And then, oh, yeah, it was CCXP. So I couldn't see it Thursday night because I was reacting to Furiosa and stuff. So it just was bad timing. Michael Sin says, Grace, what's your long wear secret? For the most part, your coverage stays pretty intact in the sniffle zone. <laughs> I'm just toughing through it, Michael. Ray Skymunker says, Disney did Chris Pine dirty with Wish. Need him in a Ken movie. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I voted. When I voted for him for best song, I was like, what if he got, I mean, he never will. But what if Ryan Gosling, Jack Black, and Chris Pine all performed for best original song at the Oscars? <clears throat> it would be so wonderful. Uh, Ixion says, you are right about Denis Villeneuve. He has never had a blockbuster. What is your favorite movie of his? Um, I really liked Prisoners. I thought that was very good. I liked, I liked part of um, that movie with Emily Blunt, Sicario. And then I thought the end was horrible because it made women and women in law enforcement look awful. I was like, no, this is, she's like, what do you mean where things are bad? And you're like, toughen up. Fritz Fromm says, does Invincible take too long for season two? Yeah, I think it did. I really do. And I think their release date is not great. It's just too crowded right now. Rippy says, much love from the Frost Cupcake Factory in the Bay Area. What a great name. Can't wait to hear your thoughts on Anatomy of a Fall. I'm trying to watch it at some point, Rippy. I have a screener. But that is a great name for a factory, the Frost Cupcake Factory. It sounds like a supervillain kind of a thing, too. Oh, I love it. Jose Dominguez says, what do you think of Taylor as person of the year? She just keeps on winning, but I told you, I think she needs to take a break in 2024. Like, she really needs to take a break. Uh, I'll ask you guys. 
is Taylor Swift overexposed? And then we let, I can't, no, I can't get enough. <laughs> and then, yes, we need a break. Then, uh, I don't care. I don't pay attention at all. Okay, there you go. Do, do, do. Troy, I don't get involved with stuff like that, but I appreciate your support. Uh, Ricky Richie, I'm glad you're looking forward to the Penguin Show. Mr. Magic has been a subscriber from the very beginning, so so glad to be him. Oh, you got a membership. Thank you for the live streams. We are you are much appreciated. Ah, thank you, Mr. Magic. You're I always love your comments. Uh, J.A. says, I'm not convinced that Wonka is a good movie. It's a good movie. Everybody loves it. Uh, I mean, but go decide for yourself. Go see a matinee so it's a little cheaper. Aram, I have no news yet on when they're having Aquaman screenings. I did reach out and they said not any, but I reached out like a couple, like a week or so ago and they said none were planned quite yet. Carson, my list was in alphabetical order and that's why Elemental was first. Let's see. Greg Lazar says, is it true that Disney is no longer going to reporting on the box office of the Marvels? No. Who would say that? Uh, James Nova says, how do you think the rumored Pelt's Perlmutter vendetta against Iger will play out? Well, Iger better start turning things around because his movies are not doing well. And so the longer that things are not going well, the more people might be like, well, maybe we do need somebody else in here. Uh, thanks, Not Modern Painter. I appreciate that. Uh, Brett Crandall says, have you read the new Alan Scott Green Lantern comic? Happy holidays from, to the BTT community from Smallville. Ah, uh, thanks, Brett. Happy holidays to you, too. I'm afraid I haven't read that comic because I'm not a big Green Lantern fan. But I have heard some good things about it. I've heard it's been a little bit controversial because, you know, Alan Scott, of course, has been reimagined as an LGBT character, which I am totally cool with. Uh, but I just, I just don't like Green Lantern overall as a character. I'm not, I'm not a Green Lantern fan. John says, what's the biggest reason between the first Captain Marvel's box office versus the seconds? Did the first simply benefit from the release date or did Marvel just degrade her brand that bad? I think the trailers were really awful. I think that, you know, a lot of bad statements were made by people associated with the film. Uh, I think the bottom line was the trailers were just awful. If the trailers had been amazing, people would have gone. And also the first movie was introducing scrolls. I mean, it seemed really important and they were introducing a really powerful female character for Marvel. And, but what did this movie have, you know? Raman Zilla says, have you seen Fellow Travelers on Paramount Plus? It's the best piece of LGBT media I've ever seen. That's wonderful to hear. I'm so happy for Matt Bomer. I, ha I haven't seen it though yet. Rippy said, oh, so I got that one. Oh, let's see here. I'm way over my time, so I'll switch to shout outs in just a moment. LP, I'm not going to watch May, December. I just, I'm done with downer stuff for now. Albert, I might see Iron Claw. I have to decide. Okay, I think we're pretty good. Let's do shout outs, okay? So what are you up to? What are you doing? I'll watch I Love Fables. Great. I like, I love every character on Fables. It's a great comic. Kay Walton, I would not be surprised if, if, if Charles Melton wins the Oscar. I think there's a very good chance that he'll win. Oh, close the poll. Oh, yeah. What did everybody decide on Taylor Swift? Hey, David. David Rogers. Uh, is Taylor Swift overexposed? 45% say, yes, we need a break. 33% don't pay attention at all, and only 20% can't get enough. That's interesting. Uh, SMR Goose is ordering sushi. Hey, Nico. 
James Novus has just finished work. I love your content. Thank you, James. Jack says, designing some movie posters for my coursework in England. Cool course, Jack. Well, Danny says, day off. Much love from Guatemala. I love my new badge. Oh, you're at Emerald. Thank you for being awesome. My pl That's so nice of you to say, Danny. I'm glad you think so. Paul Brunel says, on my way to see the 4K restoration of The Abyss in theaters. Oh, that should be cool. That's a good movie. Uh, LEF is sipping peppermint tea in bed. Oh, uh, Danny says, standing grace in Chicago. While Sir G Grizzle says, eating barbecue grilled chicken with mac and cheese. Oh, you're eating good. While Mr. Magic says, drinking coffee in Portland, sending you unsickly vibes. I could use them. Uh, oh, Mark Chapman sick and Colleen uh, wishes uh, that he feels better. Oh, happy birthday. Whose birthday is it? Judith or is that supposed to be Judith? Hey, Kevin, welcome back. Adam de Sabatos is about to go on a walk. Spring like weather here in Colorado. I like it, but also I worry about global warming. Let's see here. Uh, Mark, Ch oh, Mark says I'm sick at home with COVID for a second time. I'm sorry to hear that, Mark. Feel better. Oh, yeah, Judith says, enjoying the last hour of my birthday in Sweden. Happy birthday, Judith. Uh, thanks for spending part of it with us. Uh, EB the Blue says, watching Beyond the Trailer with my little brother in Toronto. Hey, little brother. Well, Nicholas Marmaras is eating vegetables in the oven oh, uh, and drinking, you're eating them from the oven and drinking ozu in Greece. Oh, that sounds nice. Robin Zilla says, eating shrimp fried rice and dying of sickness and disease. Oh, I'm sorry. Big Witch says, just finished my cross-stitch project in Seattle. Nice use of emojis there. Well, Rashad, oh, Rashad, how did your date go? I hope it was a hit. Uh, and this is getting ready for work. Love from Vegas. And then RJ14 says, uh, hey, Grace, at work watching your videos. That's cool. Awesome. He's working. He's research. Let's see here. What else is going on? John Till says, they did it right. It made it dark. Imagine Jem. Uh... That's not where, what you're doing, John Teal. Brett Crandall says, doing Christmas shopping in Kansas. Oh, I love it. While Elise says, her birthday is December 22nd. That's a Friday. That's going to be a big day for the Christmas weekend. Bye, Danny. Riley Steele says, finishing up Dune uh, Chapter 1 and about to watch May, December. Someone's having a movie day. While El Albert, oh, uh, Rashad says, it went amazing. We're going out again on Friday. Oh, Rashad. Tell her, tell, tell your date uh, that we said hi. Uh, that's awesome. That is so cool, Rashad. That's so cool. Play cool. Keep it cool. No expectations. Albert Diaz says, cheers from Bogota, Colombia. Grace, I'm feeling exhausted at work. Last two weeks have been savage. I need a break. Need to watch movies. Oh, that's good. I'm glad. I, it's almost the weekend. Mr. Magic's birthday's on the 30th. Oh, Fritz, thank you. Uh, so hello to you in Germany. Dr. Jace is drinking a Bang energy drink and playing Starfield. That's awesome. While Luis Rosado is making menus for the holidays. Oh, very Downton Abbey of you. What should we serve for dinner? Oh, I know what gem is, John Teal. But, you know, we're, uh, we're just doing shout outs. Don't try and sneak a question in here. Just Josh is excited for Real Housewives of Beverly Hills later. Me too, Josh. Me too. Oh, let's see here. And then Ethan Vega says, I'm at home at Philly wondering if Marvel, Marvel will be able to fix the Secret Wars story or to fit it into one movie. That's interesting. Ethan, look at you sneaking a question in there. And then Michael McKen Hey, Michael says, making omelets and a mess in Chicago. I've never made an omelet, but I can imagine it would be very messy. I don't, I'm not a big omelet fan, I have to tell you. Uh, I'm glad you feel that way, Rashad. Luis says, well, I am a chef. It's for work. Oh, that's awesome, Luis. That's so cool that you are planning a Christmas, Christmas holiday meals at work. What a cool thing to do. And then Slightly Salty says, plotting my U.S. road trip, Niagara Falls to New Orleans for next year. Are you from outside the country? That is going to be quite the trip. You're going to have a great time. I wonder where you're stopping. Uh, New Orleans is a great destination. So nice. Bye, the Fonz. All right, I better get going, everybody. I had a great time as usual with you, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.